I knew I was going to have to make this video at one point, so let me just get right to it. Right, so Devin Haney clearly has done himself no favours in why he's getting backlash. You know, part of it is his fault, part of it is not. You know, it's just people, how people can react. For example, him calling out Lomachenko back in 2019, that's not a bad thing at all, you know, but that put a target on his back. You know, Lomachenko fans or fan, boxing fans are very sensitive when it comes to Lomachenko uh, for some reasons. You know, and um, before then, you know, he wasn't really that known. He wasn't really on people's radars like that. But people that did know him respected him for his work ethic and humility. At least most of them did. And then when he called out Lomachenko, he brought more eyes to him. But he also brought a lot of people that didn't respect that. They didn't like it. And since then, he's been put on a microscope and he'll take little digs at things he's done, things that he hasn't done. You know, just trying to make a big deal about some of the smallest things. But again... In, in in the part where it is his fault Why he's getting backlash Is during the pandemic Constantly tweeting what he was going to do And this and that and the other You know, calling people out It was getting annoying To be honest, it was getting annoying And T. Fimo Lopez at one point Had to tell him to shut the fuck up You're so goddamn annoying I wonder if anyone else remembers that Because I remember that Like during the pandemic Kaney was talking a lot And he never used to talk a lot like that before You know, but Since the pandemic He started doing that and then he didn't do himself any favours when he went on 78 Sports TV and saying he'll never lose to a white boy and this and that and the other. Now, clearly, he fucking deserved to get any, to get backlash for that because, you know, it doesn't matter what colour some skin is. That's got nothing to do with your boxing skills. What has to do with your boxing skills is your work ethic, your brain, and, you know, whatever natural gifts you were given, you know. That's what's got to do with your boxing skills. And anyone of any skin colour can get the right, you know, can get the right stuff. So he didn't do himself any favours with that. You know, Anthony Durrell, he didn't do himself any favours when he said that, although to be fair, Caleb Plant is black. Um, Bernard Hopkins didn't do himself any favours when he said that. Alimenta didn't do himself any favours when he said that. You know, it's just very fucking stupid to say, sh to say shit like that. Very stupid. So again... It has given people more of a reason to give him backlash. And, you know, he has to take he has to take it. He has to take it. Because some of the things he's done, he has caused on himself. You know, and, you know, pushing Lomachenko out of the way. And, of course, that pissed people off even more. You know, and, yeah, fires push fires each other all the time. The Waynes and whatnot. Like, you, and they have completely different energies. Like, when Javonna pushed Roly, that was supposed to be funny. But Haney does it to Lomachenko and now it's made us be this big thing like oh no don't touch our precious Lomachenko don't you ever do that and Haney even got a bigger fine than any other fight would usually because he pushed Lomachenko out of the way in you know but <laughs> when you say certain things and you do certain things to certain people you have to you have to be where you have to be you know wary of the consequences why do you think Shakur you know he after Haney you know beat Lomachenko Shakur instantly jumped to the bandwagon and said, oh, Lomachenko won. And then a couple of days later, I was like, actually, maybe it's not a robbery. You know, maybe you could see Haney winning. And then, you know, Haney didn't give him what he wanted. So Shakur went back to the, oh, you know what? Lomachenko won. And then he started talking all nicely to, to Lomachenko and this and that, trying to get a fight with him. But when he was talking to Tank Davis and Haney, he started talking reckless to them. You get what I'm saying? Because he knows damn well he ain't going to get as much heat for talking shit to those two guys. As he with Lomachenko. You see what I mean? He was trying, and I said this at the time, that's the kind of stuff he was doing. You know, so Shakur was playing it smart at that moment in time. You know, and you notice that Shakur hasn't really made a big fuss about Lomachenko ducking him. Because even though it's true, he knows what kind of backlash he's gonna get for that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So yeah, Haney's had to take the uh excuse me. Um the rough of the smooth. You know, ever, everything he's done ever since calling out Lomachenko, people have tried to find something wrong. We, he actually did something wrong. They're still going to try and find something wrong. You know, um, you know, but uh, that's that's just the way it goes. But even with all that being said, people are saying the dumbest shit 
ever, ever since Haney's lost. And to be fair, they'd be saying this even before he's lost. But now that he's lost, people are taking it, uh, taking it up a notch because of recent recency bias. You know, um, <clears throat> like first of all, they're saying that uh, Haney's been protected in his career. Well, how's he been protected? Oh, because he had the easiest run to undisputed ever in boxing history. Uh, that's why I know you lot don't even know fuck all about boxing because there's several guys that have been undisputed or a couple guys that have been undisputed that had an easy run. For example, Marvin Hart. Do you guys even know who Marvin Hart is? Most of you tell me no. Well, guess where he's from? Louisville, Kentucky. You know, same place where Ali's from. Do you, you guys even know who Marvin Hart is? I'll tell you who Marvin Hart is. Marvin Hart is heavyweight champion. Yeah, Marvin Hart has got to be the most unknown heavyweight champion ever in boxing history. And when the way he won his heavyweight championship, correct me if I'm wrong, please, um, is I don't think he even won it in the ring against someone. He beat someone and then he became heavyweight champion afterwards because the person that was heavyweight champion beforehand retired. Please correct me if I'm wrong, you know. But all he had to do was win one fight in which I don't think the heavyweight title was on the line and then became heavyweight champion afterwards and then he lost in his first defence. If you're trying to tell me that's any easier than, De than Devin Haney being given the WBC championship because Lomachenko asked to be franchise champion and defending it several times before going into an honest beef fight against Cambosas, then you're a fucking idiot. You're an idiot. And people say you're the easiest run to undisputed, but we're completely forgetting that before the fight, how many of you was picking Cambosas to beat Haney? They don't lie now, because a lot of you were. Now, obviously, Haney was the favourite, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people were confident Cambosas would win the fight. Some of you was even saying that Cambosas would stop him. I mean, that's insane. And Haney goes in there, makes it look easy twice. Now, all of a sudden, it's the easiest run to Undisputed. No, just because he made it look easy, doesn't mean it's the easiest run to Undisputed. Especially when a lot of you actually thought Cambosas had a chance. It would be a completely different story if a lot of you thought like Haney, like all of you thought like Haney would just wash him, no problem. But that wasn't the case. A lot of you actually thought Cambosas stood a chance. And now you're backtracking when Haney makes it look easy. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, um, and then he fought, you know, Lomachenko and a lot of people saying, oh, he fought a blown up featherweight in Lomachenko and got a controversial decision. And a lot of you thought like, you know, he lost. Listen, I'm not even going to try and sit there and debate who who won that fight. Like, yeah, but I'm fucking tired. You know, I know where I stand in this. Haney won, you know, there's, you know, because people say, oh, you clear Lomachenko won because this fighter said this and that fighter said that. But when, when you bring up fighters that said Haney won and people that work in top rank that said that Haney won, all of a sudden their opinions don't matter. So that's why that argument doesn't even wash because people will cherry pick to support their argument. You know, so I take that shit with a grain of salt. And you ask them certain questions like, you know, um, how many clear rounds did Lomachenko won? And then they start giving rounds that Haney clearly won and say that Lomachenko clearly won it, you know? And then people will say, oh, you know, this judge, you know, um, gave Lom uh, Haney the 10th round, which Lomachenko clearly won. But then they don't talk about the fact that that same judge gave Lomachenko the 6th round, a round that Haney clearly won. You see, you see what I mean? So I'm kind of done arguing about it with people. You know, people are not going to change their minds regardless of what, you know, um, proof is put in front of them. But let's say, oh, he, you know, he struggled against a blown up featherweight. A blown up featherweight. Okay, cool. Is Lomachenko a blown up featherweight to some extent? Yeah, he is. You know, but first of all, you guys talk like as if he's some fucking small kid, some small, in, you know, innocent kid that no way in hell could have had a chance against a much bigger Devin Haney when it's just far, far, far from the truth. First of all, Lomachenko won his gold medal as a lightweight in the 2012 Olympics. Did you guys know that? He won it as a lightweight, not a featherweight. Is when he turned pro, he drained himself two weight divisions to featherweight. When we, more, really and truly, Lomachenko is a natural super featherweight, not a featherweight. You understand what I'm saying? Because fighters, when they turn pro, usually, you know, take themselves down a weight class from the weight class that they win when they in the amateurs because in the amateurs, you have your weigh in on the same day you're about to fight. While in the pros, it's the day before, so you have more time to, you know, rehydrate in between. So obviously, if, if you have more time to rehydrate, you're also going to have more time to cut and you're going to take a bit more liberties, you know. So Lomachenko really is a natural super featherweight. So now, when I said that, it, it doesn't make it look as small, make him look as small. 
And second of all, you guys are talking as if Lomachenko hadn't been fine in light at the lightweight weight division um, since 2018, which is five years before he even fought Devin Haney. You know, so blown up featherweight. So was Lomachenko <laughs> a blown up featherweight when he's beating bigger guys like Nakatani or Kome? You know, because Nakatani is way bigger than Devin Haney, way bigger than Devin Haney. But it didn't stop Lomachenko from thumping him up easily. No problem. You know, Kome, he's a big lightweight. You know, Pedraza, he's a big lightweight. You know, Luke Campbell, you know, whoever. Lomachenko has a track record of beating much bigger lightweights. You know, so he's clearly capable of fighting much bigger guys, especially when Lomachenko has a wrestling background as well. You can look it up. So, you guys want to talk about him being a blown up featherweight, but this blown up featherweight can clearly handle himself against much bigger lightweights. It'd be a different story if he couldn't, but he he can. You know, if Lomachenko just stepped up to lightweight and fought Devin Haney, Devin Haney struggled. I see the point. I will. I I I can kind of see the point. But you're talking about a guy that fought the weight division for five years prior before he even fight Devin Haney. You know, it's a stupid thing to say. You understand? And before the fight, it's not as if you guys were, <laughs> you guys are talking as if you weren't picking Lomachenko to beat Haney anyways. He wasn't a blown up featherweight then, so why is he a blown up featherweight now? If he's a blown up featherweight, why were you picking him to beat Haney? And some of you were even picking him to dominate Haney. As if Haney wasn't even going to win a round before Lomachenko would stop him. But Devin Haney exceeded your expectations. But somehow you guys would still say that Devin Haney didn't look impressive when he clearly exceeded your expectations. And I said this at the time, like, you lot are not making any sense. You guys thought he wouldn't make Haney quit. Well, that never happened. You know, Haney was competitive in the fight and he won most of the rounds. Well, oh yeah, he struggled with a uh, blown up featherweight who we gas up for beating much bigger fighters. It doesn't make any sense. Like people would just say the dumbest shit, you know, when they're getting onto a fire, you know. And, you know, people also want to talk about, um, you know, protect him, right? And say that Haney has had been protected because the referee and the Ryan Garcia fight, the referee was fucking terrible on both sides. Haney should have had a point deducted for the hugging and Ryan Garcia should have more points deducted for constantly turning his back, which is clearly illegal. And there was times where Ryan Garcia was grabbing Haney by the neck. Why the hell is no one talking about that? Why is no one talking about that? You can clearly see it. You can clearly see Ryan Garcia holding Devin Haney by the neck and the referee's trying to get Ryan Garcia to let off, but Ryan Garcia won't go. You know? So you guys want to talk about, oh, the biased referee and it's why Haney didn't get knocked out. But Ryan Garcia is also a reason why Haney didn't get knocked out. He, he could have had the opportunity in the 12th round to push for a knockout. It's not as if Devin Haney had completely recovered by then, but he didn't. He instead decided to taunt Haney. So whose fault is that, that <laughs> Ryan Garcia didn't get the knockout? You know, and you guys want to talk about protection. You guys want to talk about getting gifted shit. Well, what about Lomachenko? And I said this before. Lomachenko had one professional fight and in the second professional fight, he gets a shot at the title. What? For what? And you people say, yeah, but the amateurs, the amateurs. Yeah, achieving certain shit in the amateurs definitely will give you a boost in the pros. But not after one professional fight. Especially when there's professionals out there that have been fighting way longer, especially in the world scene, that are literally waiting for title shots and they just get leapfrogged by this guy who had one professional fight. I mean... <laughs> How's that not getting gifted? You understand what I'm saying? Lomachenko just gets a title shot in the second fight without even doing anything in the pros. Because he did shit in the amateurs? The two, the amateurs and the pros are different though. That's what everyone keeps telling me. But when it comes to Lomachenko, all of a sudden they're, they're the same. I don't understand that. And then shortly after losing to Orlando Salido, he gets another vacant shot against Gary Russell Jr. What? How's that not getting gifted? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You know, and him being with Bob Arum also helped him because after they move up to Super Fifthway, he gets another title shot with the WBO. I mean, does is that not indi is that not indicative? Several Bob Arum fires move up and they get instant WBO title shots. You know, without even having to be super champion or anything like that. You know. Lomachenko is one of them. Why is no one talking about that? 
You, you understand what I'm saying? And you want to talk about trying to make a fight bigger than what they are? They took Lomachenko's, ESPN took Lomachenko's loss and turned it into a draw. And no one ever talks about that. Can you imagine that outrage if that was any other fighter? People be talking about it, but no one ever talks about that. You took a man's loss and turned it into a draw. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, is that not trying to make a fight seem better than what they actually are? It's by messing with their record to make it look better than what it actually is. But again, no one talks about it because, you know, it's not actually the gifts and whatnot that people have a problem with. It's who is get is is who is benefiting from it. That's what they have a problem with. You know, people aren't, you know, um can you know consistent with their arguments. And people want to talk about, oh, Lomachenko got robbed because I'm three American judges. Well, there's he's had several American judges for his fights, three all the time in America, and he's won the sh- decisions. When he fought Jermaine Ortiz, there was three American judges. I think one or two of them, you know, judged the Haney fight. And he got some wide scorecards, like 117, 116, 112. When anyone that's watched that fight can clearly see he didn't win that wide against Jermaine Ortiz. You know, people complain about it for like five minutes and they moved on. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> people, you know, their stupid arguments, you know, to, to shit on certain fighters. Devin Haney is one of them, you know. Um, what else was I thinking of? And people say Devin Haney is also getting backlash because, you know, people are trying to say he's the new Floyd. I've been saying for years this guy's nothing like the new Floyd, nothing. And they need to stop saying fires in the new Floyd because it usually puts a curse on them. They said this about Adrian Broner. There was a lot of people that said this about um, Haney. You know, some people are saying it about Shakur. You know, none of these motherfuckers are the new Floyd and it doesn't need to be a new Floyd. I said years ago, this guy's nothing like the new Floyd, you know. And even Devin Haney, years ago in the interview, said that, you know, he likes the comparisons, but he's trying to be like the new Devin Haney, you know. So you can see to some extent that he wasn't even trying to, you know, um, that he wasn't even trying to, you know, uh, you know, get, you know, try and, you know, wear the crown of the new Floyd. While on the other hand, his dad, you know, has a different view where he's saying, oh, my son's the Ben of Floyd at the age of 25, which is just, just a stupid thing to say, really. You know, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just putting more pressure. But people say they hate Devin Haney because he's being compared to um, Floyd Mayweather and he's not lived up to it. But then if you was to call Lomachenko overrated, because in the past, people comparing him to the likes of Pacquiao, Roberto Duran and Floyd as well, then people get mad. Well, were you guys not hyping him up to the level of those guys? Were you not hyping him up to be the level of Pernell Whitaker, Roberto Duran, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao? Were you guys not doing that? Yes, you were. Yes, you were. And I said he's overrated because of that. Because when it's time for him to fight these certain people, he loses. Yeah, Lomachenko loses. You know, I know that's very hard for you, some of you to believe because some of you actually like to like to believe that Lomachenko is undefeated. Like, he likes to think he is as well. Again, it's funny how people gave him shit for it for like five minutes and then they moved on. <laughs> but certain fights, they say one thing and it follows them forever. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it's hilarious, really. <clears throat> but, you know, you guys want, you guys want to um, hold Lomachenko to those standards. And then when he doesn't live up to it, you complain that other people criticise him for it. You understand? Like, <laughs> you guys hold him to those standards, but then complain that he lost the fight because his opponent's too big. Well, what did Roberto Duran do? Roberto Duran started in boxing as, what, lower than lightweight? When he first started off, he was really tiny. And then he fought all the way to super middleweight. One of his best wins in his career is against Aaron Barkley, who is a middleweight, a huge middleweight at that, six foot one. You know, he's a huge middleweight. That's one of the uh, Roberto Duran's best wins. He's the first guy to take Marvin Hagler the the uh, the distance um, in his championship reign. You know, a, a, a lightweight like Duran was able to do that. Duran was able to beat a much bigger Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, he was able to do that. Floyd Mayweather started off from super featherweight, fought all the way to 154 and beat guys like Canelo. You know, um... Penel Whitaker, you know, he started off at, um, wait, class he started off at, um, 
what did he start off at lightweight? Uh, yeah, I think he started off at lightweight because he was on the spirit at lightweight and Devin Haney is actually the first on the spirit lightweight champion since Benel Whitaker. He started off at lightweight and was able to give Oscar De La Hoya a tough fight at welterweight, a fight where a lot of people thought like uh, Penel Whitaker won that. You get what I'm saying? You know, um, Manny Pacquiao started off as a malnourished kid at what, flyweight? Had to put coins in his pockets just so he can make weight. And won a title at 154 against a much bigger Antonio Margarita. What has Lomachenko done that's on the level of any of these guys? Nothing. But you guys have no problem comparing him to the likes of those guys. But you'll get mad at people like me for calling him overrated. Well, you guys compared him to the level of those guys, but he hasn't lived up to it. So you want to say, Devin, you know, Devin Haney's getting shit because people are comparing him to Mayweather. Cool. I have no problem with that. But then you guys don't even keep the same energy when it comes to Lomachenko. You know, so I do feel like the backlash Devin Haney's got in these days. Well, not just these days, but it's again, turn up a notch since he's lost. It's, it's, it's stupid. I'm not saying it's completely unwarranted. You know, because I'm not saying they don't make good points here and there, you know. But a lot of it, you guys don't even keep the same energy. You know, you say you hate him for this reason, but when it's a fire you like, you don't hold him to the same energy. <laughs> so I feel like people are just being very disingenuous, you know. Don't say you hate a fire for this reason, when in reality you don't, you just hate him because they're, they're them. You know, because you don't hold other fires to the same standard. So he hasn't done himself any favours in a backlash he's going, so he has to take it, you know, he has caused some of it on himself, but on the other hand, you guys are saying the dumbest shit, talking about him being protected, like, so he's protected, but he fought George Cambosas, a guy that Lomachenko is about to fight right now, and you guys aren't complaining about it, so he's protected when he's fought George Cambosas, beat him twice, but Lomachenko fights George Cambosas, after losing to Devin Haney, and people are right with it, George Cambosas, who's coming to shit form. George Cambosas, who really and truly should have lost his last fight against Maxi Hughes. Oh, Lomachenko ain't being protected when he fights George Cambosas, but Loma, uh, Haney is when he fought him for Undisputed. Like, sh do you guys not see how fucking dumb this sounds? You don't see how dumb this sounds? <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's all I gotta say. It's the first amount. Peace.